Welcome to the next of our series of mini lectures. Uh, we continue with understanding a laser. And again, to review, uh, we're really covering and going through a lot of material. Uh, we've learned about cavities and stability. We've learned about beam propagation. We actually did that first and have some equations to see how a Gaussian beam will propagate. Uh, we know a cavity will form a Gaussian beam, provided that it's stable. Uh, the cavity also selects particular frequencies or longitudinal modes. A gain medium is composed of energy levels, and we can calculate the width of lines uh, from transition times within the energy levels, and we can write differential equations now for that, those energy levels that include both the light and the number of electrons in various states. Uh, we know that the cavity combined with the gain is going to give a, a line shape of fluorescence and a very, very narrow line shape of laser operation that's much narrower than one of the longitudinal modes. And we know we can describe um, all these processes through the three Einstein processes of spontaneous emission, which emits broadband light in all directions, at least relatively speaking, absorption, which destroys a photon and gives its energy to raising an electron up into a higher energy level, and stimulated emission, where one photon stimulates an additional photon to come out and the electron gives up its energy level to create that photon. And all of this we've essentially gone through so far. Um, what we're going to do today is review a little bit of the quantum mechanics. Uh, we know that the laser material is an atom or molecule that has distinct energy levels. It's well beyond the scope of this course to calculate what those energy levels are. But if you take an undergraduate or graduate level quantum mechanics course, you'll learn the techniques for doing that. Um, the energy levels in sort of the high school view you see here, uh, we of course represent in a graph that looks like that, a schematic diagram if you will, and remember we don't allow transitions uh, where there's not an energy level. Um, and we can have various transitions here, the transitions are going up, so we're putting energy in to raise an electron to an upper level, but certainly the transitions can go in the opposite direction as well. Uh, schematically, um, essentially you can see that uh, the lowest allowed energy level that we consider is the the one that has a a partially filled shell the the lowest level that has electrons in it corresponds to the ground state and higher levels essentially correspond to the upper states and schematically or from a physical point of view I should say we know that these aren't delta functions there's not just a single energy there's a range of energies um, to each of these, and we can represent it like this. And our more common view of what energy levels is something like this, where each of the energy level has a width determined by the line shape. And you can actually calculate that, and you've worked with that 